Welcome to the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. My name is Jackson Mummy, and each week we'll be bringing you updated information about the bar exam and what you need to do in order to make the next bar exam your last bar exam. Ready to get started? Let's jump to it. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Today is Wednesday, February 15th. We are now in the final week leading up to the bar exam for February 2023. Pretty exciting. I have our panel here with us today. Brianna's here. Amanda's here. June's here. Judge Dawson has decided to escape for a few days, so she is not with us today. But we've got lots of expertise and lots of questions. I sent out an email earlier this week, and I said, what's your biggest challenge with this last week leading up to the bar exam? And we got great responses, amazing responses. And so we're going to jump into those, and that's what we're going to do today. We've got a few announcements just to catch everybody up on what's going on. And then Brianna and Amanda and June and I are going to jump in and try and answer your biggest challenge questions. I just want to remind everybody about if you're a July 2023 bar taker, boot camp is coming up. Live boot camp here in Denver, May 19th and 20th. You can reserve your seat with a $250 deposit, which is fully refundable. Just go to the website and check out the link at the top for boot camp. All the details are there. We will have lots more to say about that when we return after the exam, but really encourage you to attend. It's a great opportunity. We're going to limit it to 15 students. So you want to make sure that you're part of that group. So make sure you jump in there and join us. All right. With those announcements underway or out of the way, we are now ready to get to biggest challenges. They're great questions and they're reflective. I don't know that we're going to get to all of them today, but I think the questions we've got are pretty reflective of what most people are experiencing with a week to go. And so we want to jump into them. So I'm just going to start at the top of the list here that we got. And the first comment was a student wrote and said, my biggest challenge is to determine which topics to study in Florida to best prepare for essays and chart out my remaining studies this week as a mix of between writing uh, essays or listening to Florida lectures. Let me start by saying, and we'll take the broader part of this, and I'll throw it to Brianna and Amanda as well. Is it better to be doing essay practice or listening to lectures? My, my feeling at this point in time is that some writing practice is certainly going to be more valuable than just re-listening to lectures. If you're going to listen to lectures, I would listen to them at high speed. I would use bar maps, which has got the fast finish audio version of the lectures. But I think just listening to lectures is pretty passive right now, and I'm not sure that's the best use. Amanda, let me throw it to you. What's your take on that? Essays yeah. or lectures? <laughs> yeah, I think that I agree with you if you're going to go back and look at the lectures. And I think Brianna said this last time, you would go back to a specific point in the lecture wherever you think you need to hear it again and maybe it'll click. But I think part of learning the law is working through problems, both MBE and SA. And I think that's like where the hard work lies too. It's not always just hearing it again one more time, although sometimes that's helpful. It's sometimes just failing at a question or not accomplishing a question to the best of your ability. And then looking at that model answer, doing the four column exercise and learning the law through that process. Brianna, what's your take on that? I completely agree with you guys. If you're going to be, if you're making a choice between essay and lectures, absolutely do the essays. If you do want to do the lectures, I agree, fast, doing it at a faster speed. And then also maybe even consider listening to them before you go to bed or while you're sleeping, if that's something that intrigues. But definitely do the work, do the problems, work through the problems, compare those model answers. That's the best, best way to use your time right now. Yeah, I think so. The student also, in terms of, which which subjects i did preview videos in all the jurisdictions you can find those you know i want to say lesson 1.5 but don't hold me to that but there is a preview video for every jurisdiction where i've given you my thoughts about what's likely to be tested so make sure you check that out i wouldn't necessarily i wouldn't take it as gospel i'll put it that way I'm pretty accurate with these but there's no inside information there's no guarantee that that's what's going to be on the test but if you're struggling between two subjects and maybe one of them is one that I think is more likely to be on the exam. You might want to go that direction at this point. The student also wrote, what 
suggestions do you have for final study the night before the exam on Monday and then on Tuesday night? Which I think is a great question. On Monday night, what I would do if you're a photo reader is photo read your state material outlines and your multi-state outlines, if that's testable in your jurisdiction, which in most cases it is. I'd photo read those and then go to bed. I'll get a good dinner and then go to bed, but I wouldn't do much study on Monday other than that. If you're not a photo reader, I would do some light skimming of the material, but again, not any heavy duty study. Brianna, what's your, what did you do the day before the exam? Do you remember? Exactly what you just said. I photo read the material front to back. I may have done 10 to 20 multiple choice questions just to help me ease some of that anxiety. Just felt like I was doing something because I just, I was traveling. So that night it was a way for me to get comfortable, find my groove at the hotel. So I did the photo reading. I did a couple of questions and that was nothing heavy. Amanda, how about you? So I wasn't a photo reader. So if you're not a photo reader, don't worry. I just used my, my bar map, like my maps. And so I picked which ones I was going to go over and I did those. And then the morning of, I did 10, 15 warm-up problems, maybe even less, but literally just warm up, not worry about what I got right or wrong. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a good strategy. And then Tuesday night, after you've done your state materials, I would just do the same process of just a light review for MBE only, get a good dinner, go to sleep. The student said, maybe I should just watch a movie and get a good night's sleep. Yeah, that'd be okay with me. There's nothing wrong with them. If you feel comfortable, don't overdo. I think that's the point is you will have just gone through six hours of testing plus all the hours of administrative nonsense that you have to do everywhere. So I think it's good to take a rest. June, you got a thought about this? Yeah, I do. I, I just want to talk about what Brianna and Amanda both said, if everybody caught it. Neither one of them did anything heavy. They kept it light. Brianna did it to keep herself from getting anxious, to make, like, she was doing something. Like fidgety, like a fidget toy. Yeah. It kept her busy, kept her mind engaged. Amanda didn't do anything heavy. She just reviewed lightly whatever her mind maps. In other words, don't do anything and look at the results because it doesn't matter. It's not a sign. I've heard that three times from students today. Maybe this is a sign. No, it's not. Okay. Do not talk yourself out of this. Don't even look at results. Don't see, just do it to stay in flow, to get yourself ready to be engaged with something if you need to. Results the night before. Yeah, I think that's, that's a lot of wisdom there, folks. <laughs> so go with that. All right, next question. Next biggest challenge. Thank you for that one. The student says, my biggest challenge is feeling the stress and pressure of finishing all the substantive work before I can start practicing the OPEs and MBEs. This is an interesting one because we do have students that come to the course, relatively speaking, later. And in that situation, my advice has been get through your substantive studies before you do the full-length practice tests. And this student says, I'm running my own race. I'm not comparing myself with everyone else, but I can't help but to get more anxiety reading about everybody else finishing up their OPE practice or MBE practice, and I haven't even gotten to it yet. I want to talk about two things here. One is this idea of finishing up substantive study and when that should happen and the fear of missing out. I think that's the other big part. So let me just talk in terms of the calendaring, we're here on Wednesday. You should be wrapped up with your substantive studies at this point. If you haven't gotten through all the subjects by now, you need to triage. You need to get in and get the absolute, get through it either with the lecture or the reading and just get through that subject done. I think we've now reached that cutoff point. The next six days are good times to do mixed question practice what we call the OPE, the online practice exams, or the MBEs, and, but you're not going to be able to do them all, and you shouldn't do them all. It's like running a marathon. I know, Amanda, you're a runner. You wouldn't run a, a marathon a week before you ran a marathon. Am I right? Exactly. Yeah. So we want to stretch, we want to balance this out. Now, I think the most important test to take right now 
are the 2021 practice MBE because it includes civil procedure. And the second most important in my mind right now is probably the 2006 OPE, which is 200 questions, but does not include civil procedure. And some of you might be asking, what about the February 91 MBE? It's a good predictive test, but there are not written answer explanations. You have to listen to my lecture, which is painful, six hours of discussion. And I think if I had my preference between the February 91 test and the 2021 test, I'd take the 2021 test. So I think those are the two that you have to take. So that's right. I see it. But Brianna, let me ask you about this idea of FOMO, the fear of missing out. Everybody else is talking about where they're going, and this is stressing the student out. What would you say to them? How do we deal with that? You have to take a step back and take a look at where you're at, and you have to accept where you're at right now. You have to remember that, like you said, the student says they're on their own race, but it also sounds like at the same time, they're not comparing, but they are comparing. You absolutely cannot compare your journey to somebody else's. This is your journey and your life. You are on it. You are on your own roller coaster. Nobody else is on it with you. And, and accepting, I think accepting where you are is the number one piece and then figuring out where you need to go from here. I love what Jackson said about the being, being done with your substantive and the OPE is if for some reason you're not done with your substantive, I would just also recommend just jump in and do the OPE because I think that's also part of, I think fear is one of the driving factors here. And I think it might be that this student is fearful to take that test. So accept where you are and then take it. Just do it. Just say, I'm going to take this test tomorrow. Take the test. Find out where you are. The minute you do it and you just jump into it, that fear is going to go away a little bit. And you're going to be able to continue to push forward. So I think that's, that's the only thing I think I can think of to help address the fear of missing out and that fear of taking the exam. So remember, accept where you're at and then just do it. Yeah. And I've been the bad guy all along because I've been saying, you got to get through the study before you can take the test. That's been my view. But now we've reached that point where it's, okay, <laughs> you are where you are. Take the tests, right? And let's see where you are. Along the same lines, another student wrote and said, my biggest challenge is what to prioritize. I'm still completing the OPs and I haven't completed all of the practice essays. Let me just say, you don't have to complete all the practice essays. I'm not a big fan of doing X number of essay questions at this point, as we've been talking about. I think that what you want to do, you reach a point where doing all three OPEs and all three or four MBEs is too much. You don't need to do that. So you're selective with what you do. And then when it comes to the essays, my view is instead of trying to do them all, take the two or three subjects that are the most difficult for you from an essay standpoint and write a few essays in each of those subjects. So if property is your toughest subject, write two or three property essays and review them and mind map them, and then go to the next one, but don't try to do everything. Amanda, what, what's your, uh, your view of that question of, should you be doing everything or how do you narrow it down? Yeah, I would completely agree. Like you, you don't, you just don't need to do everything and there's no way that you're gonna know everything. And even if you do every question, the bar is gonna be testing one, the bar is going to test it differently. It's going to show up different for you. And two, the bar tests a lot of the same concepts over and over. So probably doing a handful is okay. Some students wanted more practice, but didn't have time to do full essays, they felt. So one of the things I advise is to do the four column exercise, right? Read the question and just write, put your, get your conflict pairs in order, write what you think the law, it would have to be to support each side and then go back and see. You don't have to go through a full analysis. Go back and see if you at least could pick the conflict pairs out and if you got the law on both sides because that will also help you learn the law, right, as you yeah. go. So even if you don't, if you feel the pressure to do more, right, you could always just do a short inversion of that by reading the question and making a little four column for yourself and picking out your conflict pairs. I think that's valuable practice. Yeah. Uh, along those lines, and other students said, my biggest challenge is I feel like I haven't done enough practice questions or practice tests. Brianna, 
what do you say to them? I mean, we get this question all the time. I know you guys get it in group coaching. But I haven't done enough. What? How do we answer that? Oh, yeah, that is a that's a very common question. You're you, at some point, you just have to accept the fact that I have done enough and I am enough, and it will be enough for the bar. I think the way that you get there is just obviously attending the call and taking some of our advice, but so I only did about five or six essays in every single topic. I followed Jackson's advice in that MBE email and those guidelines of where you were with the scores and how many tests you should do. I did not do any tests beyond the February 1991 exam because I followed Jackson's guidelines. I think it's one of the hardest things that, that we have to do in trying to say, okay, enough is enough. I have done enough. But as long as you are within those parameters and you've done the work, you have to, at some point, sit back and say, okay, I'm trusting the process. I have done enough. Now, I love what Amanda just, what Amanda was just talking about with some of those essays as well. If you continually feel like you need to be doing more, just read through some of the essays, come up with an answer, think about it. If you don't have time to write it down and you're working through nervous energy, think about the answer, compare it to the model answer, and then move on to the next question. You guys, like, there, there is only so much you can do between now and the bar exam. If it makes you feel good to do a little bit more, you can do a little bit more, but it's, it's, you're going to get there. You have done enough. At some point, you just have to, you have to accept that and embrace this process and trust Jackson's advice. Yeah. The next, thank you. Those are great comments. The next question was just so well written. I'm just going to read it because I, I just love the way the student put it. And I don't remember who wrote it, but thanks to whoever did it. When we asked what's your biggest challenge, they said, it's my own emotions and fear of failure, probably. My mind keeps wanting to distract me with time wasters. It feels like I'm riding horseback on a horse that doesn't want to stay on the path. Ooh, that was good. It's frustrating, but I keep telling myself I've done the work and I can trust that. I'm trying to resist the urge to spend my time in useless panic, reviewing the entire course, and instead just focus on what I don't know, rather than bathing in the comfort of reviewing what I already know. I don't, how do we even, I think that's awesome. I don't think there's anything we can add to it. You guys, you got anything to put on that? That's great. Yeah, very, that was very self-aware. Yeah, it was very self-aware. And the student finished up and said, from what I can figure out, nobody feels like they've mastered all the material when they pass. My test, my mantra is I know a lot more than what it feels like. Amanda, that's a pretty good mantra, isn't it? Yeah, I I completely agree. And I've talked about this from, like time to time about how I felt. And I think Brianna's talked about it, how she felt. And one of the things that came up in my coaching call this week was, of course, you don't feel like you mastered all the material because nobody gets 100% on the bar exam, right? Nobody who even scores the best gets 100%. So you're actually not expected to know all of it. And there's no way you could know all of it. And that's a very uncomfortable feeling because up until now, I'm sure when you went into your torts, class or you went into your crim class in law school, you probably knew 98% of it. Like you, you probably did, no matter how you did in law school, you mastered it all. And now there's just too much material to master it all. No one person can do that. So it's a very validating to say, Hey, listen, do I know 60% of it? All right. Well, you know, if you know a little more than half, then you are probably going to pass the bar. So you knew a lot more than you think, and you don't need to know hundred percent, not even close. No, I think that's exactly it. And it's all about perspective, right? And yeah. Perspective, so good. All right. Thanks. And thanks to that student, unnamed. I great wish job. I knew who had written it, but great comment, very self aware. Yeah. So, you have a question. I'm oh, sorry, there. Brianna, go ahead. No, I just wanted to, I wanted to chime in because it also sounds like this person is, when they do feel like they are going in circles, I just wanted to offer a little piece of advice if you are in these shoes. Come up with a game plan. You know when you're going to be studying over the next couple of days. Put it, write it out. 
So if you're studying for a three hour block in the morning, what are you going to do during those three hours? Which essays are you going to do? and create your schedule and what it's going to look like over the next several days right up until the exam. It's going to prevent you from spinning around in circles. It's going to give you a guidepost of the things that you want to get accomplished in each study session. And it's going to help you feel like you are continuing to study and that you are still getting through more material and that you are still picking up those bonus points. So Take a little bit of time and just write out a schedule for yourself. And it's going to help ease some of those anxieties and prevent you from, from running around in circles. Good. Thanks. June, was there a question that you wanted yeah, to Yeah, there's a question in the chat. So the question is, the more practice in the E I do, the worse my score gets. What is happening? Yeah. Yeah, what's happening is you're... You're Wiley Coyote. You just ran off the side of the mountain and you're looking down. You know, it, the, the reality here is if you do what we tell you to do, if you use selective intuition, you're going to be fine. But what happens is the fear builds and people start trying to figure it out. And we haven't done anything in this course to improve your short-term memory. This is not a memorization course. You didn't do flashcards. You didn't do mnemonics. You didn't cram. You didn't memorize. And so you get into the questions and you start saying, well, I got to figure this out. And you're trying to figure it out from your conscious brain and there's nothing there. And so it's this counterintuitive notion that you have to relax and just answer the question in 90 seconds. You just have to lean into it, even if it feels like you're just guessing, just guess. And that's when the scores start to go up. Inevitably, that's when they go up. Pressing just makes it worse. Brianna, is that a fair statement? A hundred percent. You can't, I would highly recommend this student, or if you're in this, in, in these shoes, to maybe take a step back from multiple choice questions for at least a morning, if not a day, and come back to it, sleep, listen to a paraliminal if you've got that. I listen to the let it go, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, because you cannot, you can't control you can't control that intuition that Jackson's talking about. And I think that that's what it, you probably run into in a situation where you're taking these MPE questions and then you're continually getting more and more wrong. And then you feel like you're losing even more control and then you just spiral down. So I would recommend taking a break and just coming back at it fresh and reminding yourself that you've done the work. You've been through the course. Jackson says it's not memorization. Trust your gut, trust yourself. My mantra was, I am enough. And I just told myself that over and over and over again until I just believed it. And I just, I said, You are enough, enough to pass the bar. And if that's what it takes for you to say that on repeat, like a broken record up until the bar exam, do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and keep moving because we've got a lot of questions now revolve around these same topics, but I think this is really helpful. At the other end of the spectrum from what the student that we thought was self-aware, but more like the student that's having a problem with their enemies, another student said, I think I'm walking into the exam right now knowing only four subjects. The other outlines I haven't read or even... If you've only done four subjects out of the 12 or 18 or 19, the reality is you're not ready for, to sit for the exam. That, that's just the simple truth. If you haven't gotten to those subjects, you haven't reviewed them, you haven't looked at them, you've never even seen them, I would have to say, frankly, you probably ought to just sit out and continue to study. But I'll also say this. I know that there are people that go to the exam and they just say, I'm going to take a shot at it. I'm just going to see what it's like. And that's okay. There's, it's your journey. You get to do that. There's no penalty in our course for retaking the course. There's no fee to have to retake the course. And you can certainly do it. But I think most bar students today, if we ask them, what would you change about the way you studied? Most of them would say, I wish I'd started earlier. And I just think that's the reality. Now, I know Amanda, for example, you started relatively late and then you were just like, you were just like, nuts. You did it all and you got it. You did incredibly well, but it would have been easier if you'd started earlier, right? 
oh, a hundred percent would have been easier. It would have been nice to have more time. Like life just threw this at me and I tried to just tackle it the best way I could. But yeah, the early, the more you give yourself, the more time you give yourself, again, you have time for the unknown because things pop up, you get sick. Yeah. So for the July takers, you're starting, you are starting early enough. So that is good. For this student, yeah, no crazier things have happened. Like you could still pass. And if you can't withdraw now and you're set on it, like you, you may pass and that's okay. I think uh, I might talk about this later on because I see some more questions. If I were that student, I would, if someone asked me, and I've been asked this a lot, a few times in the last couple of days, what would you do if you only had five days to study for the bar exam and you had to focus somewhere? And I think this is good for everyone to hear and anyone can feel free to disagree with me. If I only knew, if I said, if someone said you can't do any problems and you can't do any question like MEEs, and you're, you have five days, you got to learn all this material. I would study really broad. So like, for example, and some people, some students miss this because they get caught in the weed. Every subject has something specific to it. So contracts. At its basic core, what's contracts about? It's about not letting the bad guy win, the person who's trying to be tricky, and about the party's intent. That's all the court's really trying to Evidence, what's that about? What is that about? It's about making sure irrelevant stuff and unfair stuff doesn't get before the court. Secured transactions, what's that about? Which creditor has the best claim to the property? And I would study that way and just get, because there really is like three, there really is a sentence that every subject boils down to. And if I could just do that, maybe I could get through some of the questions and some of the essays and make up the law. It'd be very hard to do it. But for some of you who are maybe feeling overwhelmed and later on asking me how I would make up the law, I would make up the law based on the foundation of the subject. And some of you miss that. I think some of you are getting so in the weeds, you miss like, what is contracts about? And if you have, if you went to a law school that had a more philosophical background, I think you might get that. But if you went to one that really hammered on knowing the law, it's probably getting by you. And I think you're at a disadvantage a, a bit. So I'm just bringing that to light here. So for that student, yeah. hey, that's my advice. I don't know if, if it's crazy advice, but that's what I would do. Yeah, I think it's great advice. I love that concept. And look, I'm not telling somebody to give up. I want to be really clear about this, but I also am a realist. And, 100%. <laughs> it's a lot of information to know. That's a Hail Mary, what I'm telling yeah, people that, yeah. to do. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And so if you're listening or watching the podcast and you haven't, and you're thinking about taking the July exam and you're thinking, oh, I've got a few months. I will tell you, you do not. You need to get started now. You will, July, you will appreciate that February you got underway. I, that's just the reality. And I think most of our students right now would probably say that as well. All right. Next biggest challenge. Is, these are great ones. I pre and I appreciate the candor that people gave us with these. It's really wonderful. Um, this student said, my biggest challenge is to write a proper outline for purposes of writing an essay. I want to make sure I touch on every conflict or issue brought up within the essay to make sure I don't forget something. I want to start with this by saying you don't need to answer every issue. You need to get the conflicts and the call of the question and get to the heart of it. Don't be an issue spotter. You don't need double the number of words. Get to the heart of it. Just get it and get out. Brianna, you're nodding your head. <laughs> no, you're you're a big fan of just get it done, right? Get, get yeah, to the point. I am. I am. And the reason for that, is you're under timed conditions. If you were sitting there trying to issue spot, I used to issue spot. I never passed the exam. Every single time I took it and did an issue spotting style. Right. You have got to answer the core question. If you don't answer that core question, you're missing out on almost all of the points. They're really, at its core, they're really specifically only asking you about one problem. That's it. Yes. Could you pick up bonus points by finding out some of this other stuff? But you can get fives and sixes on these essays and these MPTs by answering just that. The one thing they're going after. So, so I've read an outline while you're writing the essay or reading, reading the essay. Read the essay, read the call of the question, and just answer the call of the question. Otherwise, you are going to get completely sidetracked 
by all of your outline notes and all these other issues that you feel like you need to talk about. It is completely unnecessary. Yeah. I can tell you how to outline the answer. Pick each call the question, paraphrase it into a heading, and then write three paragraphs, FLA. End of outline. I don't know what else to say. That's why I created this structure 40 years ago. So that, that's what it's about. Amanda, you want to add anything to that? I think that was really well said. I know something that resonated in my group coaching call was the issue thing. Brianna said, they're giving you the issue. This issue yeah. spotting thing is the thing of the past. At least as far as the UBE is concerned, they're giving you the issue. So I don't see how you're going to get any points by going, the issue is, you know, that no, I don't, I just don't think it's going to happen. They already told you what it was. They ask you who won, who gets the property. It's all there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, good. Next question was a long one, but let me try and break it down and see what we've got. And students said, the challenge for me is remembering this is an academic test, not life and death situation. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. It is not life and death. If you're doing the work, you'll walk in prepared. They said, do my best to be at peace with it. I think that's true. And I think it's important to remind yourself of that using the paraliminals. And June, if you've got the link for the paraliminals to order, I would encourage that. Or the virtual boot camp's got the paraliminals built into it as well. So there's lots of places that you can get those. And those are really good for that purpose. But then the student said, having said all that, I struggle with how to spend my time. How many MBEs? How many essays? How many MPTs? There is no magic number. I just have to say this again. There is no magic number. It's not about doing so many questions, so many MBEs or anything else. You work to your weaknesses. So they said, what's the guidance you have for making decisions about how to spend your now scarce time? Work on what you don't know. If you're having trouble with essays in a particular subject, do those essays. But you don't have to do essays for everything. And you don't have to do every MBE. And you don't have to do every MPT. How many essays to write per doctrine? How many time, how much time to spend reviewing mind maps and notes? It, there's no one size fits all answer. You work on what you don't know. You spend your time there. Brianna, you want to add anything to that? Is there anything? Yeah, a little bit. Of, so like I said before, if you are struggling trying to figure out where to focus your time, do a, I would wake up in the morning. I did my photo reading of all of my outlines. I then took about 30 minutes to review my mind maps. Then I did about, I don't know, 25 multiple choice questions. And then I would do or review, not even do three essays in a particular topic. Let's say I was an area that I was, I was comfortable in. I did one essay in, let's say, torts. And then and it's a rinse and repeat in the afternoon. So coming up with that game plan to, to just carve out a little bit of time for your review in each area. If you need to read, you need to read through three essays in an area that you're unfamiliar with, do that. At this stage, you are the only person who knows what areas you're comfortable in and what areas you're uncomfortable in. So the areas that you're comfortable in, that means you're probably above that threshold of passing that area. So go pick up the bonus points, like Jackson said, in the areas you're uncomfortable with. Go pick up more points there so you can be of minimum competence in that area. But like he said, there's no number. There's no right or wrong. You have to listen to your gut. Your gut is going to tell you where you need to focus your time and energy. Yeah. Amanda, this student said, are 25 MBEs a day enough? How do you answer yeah, that? Yeah, they're definitely enough, right? But yeah. there really is. I love what Brianna said. I really do listen to your gut. I think some of these questions, because, you know, I'm seeing the same questions repeated. I know Brianna is as well, is people don't want to sit down and be honest with yourself. And it's uncomfortable to be like seven days before the exam and I still have a weak spot. Just be honest, attack that weak spot. For me, it was secured transactions. I didn't take that in law school and also enterprises, right? And I got two of those on the February, the exam. I got them both on the exam, but it was fine, right? And I just looked at my mind maps for that. I just did a few, read a few extra essays, not even did it. And that's it. I was just honest. This is the subject that these are the subjects I'm 
not too strong at. And sometimes that hurts, to be honest, and like it's uncomfortable. So people are looking for the out. Oh, if I just do 25 MBAs a day, we can forget about the fact that I'm not so good at con law. No, go and get the extra points. Yeah, it's common sense, really. And there is no magic number, to be sure. I think spending time reviewing your mind maps is very valuable right now. Mind maps are better than just linear notes. If what you've got are linear notes, you certainly want to look at them. I know that when I was in law school, I took lots of notes and I never looked at them. So that was useless, I think, relatively. Mind mapping has been a game changer and I just have seen such improvement in scores when people mind map. So if you've got mind maps, this is definitely the time to be reviewing those. Student also said, if I can't photo read right before bed, because my advice has been to photo read the outlines the night before bed without falling asleep, does it work to do it earlier in the evening and then wind down by reading a little fiction before sleeping? The answer is yes. It, it works no matter when you do it or how you do it. Photo reading is one of those things that people don't understand how it works. It just works. And Brianna, I know you were a photo reader and it's just, it just works. You just do it. And I don't really care. I like doing it right before you fall asleep because this person said that they fall asleep in their photo reading. It, it just flipped the pages. It, it works and it processes overnight. So I don't think it's a problem, but what's your take? I know you, you said earlier, you photo read every night. I did. I, this stage, I photo read all of my outlines in the morning and at night. And guys, do the affirmations, do the opening affirmations. I want all the, I want to know all, everything that's in this book, do the closing affirmations. I, I'm taking in all this information. It is going to help me pass the bar. It just helps those fuse those connections between your conscious and unconscious and everything that it has just viewed. And I know that it's unnatural and it doesn't feel like you're doing anything, but I promise you, I've told my students this over and over again. I, I will be sitting in an appointment with a client and I automatically got instinct, know the answer to their question, even if I haven't read that statute. Even if I, it's not something I've specifically addressed before, and I strongly believe that it is because of photo reading. And it's, it is. I know my gut instinct is correct. I go, I check it. It's fine. We're good to go. But lean into that photo reading. Obviously, if you are falling asleep while you are photo reading, it's probably not working. I think you do need to at least be looking at the page. So, yes, you can... Yeah. You can I, absolutely. I'm a good it. photo reader. I'm a good photo reader, but I have found it helps if my eyes are open. I don't know. Well, there you go. All right. There's a little advice. And if you're not a photo reader and you're thinking about it for the July exam, be a photo reader. It's, you don't have to be. Amanda got one of the most amazing scores of all time without being a photo reader. But for us mere mortals, yeah, I think photo reading helps. So and I'm a reading. fast, I'm a fast reader, so I must yeah, have right. some natural inclination. So I you can't judge you're a natural everyone's photo reader. And, and no, I just, I, I must have something with the fast reading. So it's everyone's different. It'll certainly you save go. you time. <laughs> it will. All right. Next, we got some of these kinds of comments where students said, "I'm my biggest challenge is understanding." And then they put in a specific. This one said, "Understanding the first half of the con law lecture." about the separation of power among the branches of government. God only knows what it means today. But the point is that you're having trouble with, as you've heard today, that's what you want to focus on. So in this particular case, go back to the lecture, go back to the bar maps, where we've got that discussion of separation of powers in the lecture, read the, the outline, do Whoa. a word search in your outline or in your question books, go to the trainer books and put in separation of powers as a search and you'll see all the questions that uh, ask about separation of powers and just do those questions and look at the answer explanations and then look at your mind maps. But it's a matter of working down in depth, I think, more than anything else. Either of you want to add anything to that or is that my, my own track? I'd love to add something specifically for con law because yeah. I struggled in this area a lot and I felt like I was less because Con law was supposed to, or always told to me that it was supposed to be the easier subjects. And I'm like, I don't understand why I just don't get it. But it was never clicking with me. And Jackson, you may be able to direct them exactly to where it is, but it's either in the nutshell book or it's in the back of the con law outline. There's about 16 points, I think, on con law specifically. 
if you forget everything else that has to do with con law, know these terms or know these things. Yeah. And it was absolutely enough for me to feel comfortable with the subject and just recognize, okay, this is just not ever going to be my area of expertise. I'm going to memorize these little things or co get comfortable with these. And that's it. And it was absolutely enough for me to pass. Yeah, those are the nutshells. And they're also in a video format. You can get the video nutshells and see them that way as well. So yeah, it's just focus on the stuff you don't know and it's birds on a wire. You knock them off and go to the next one. So for this student, it was kind of law, but it does, I mean, everybody's, I got a lot of those kinds of questions. We just inserted the words. So pick your poison. And con law is not easy. So I don't know who said that, Brianna, but it was, I tutored con law and I still think it was a hard subject on the bar. Yeah. It's a hard subject. I no, no doubt about it. All right. We got a couple more to go here. One, one student said, where do I focus my efforts to get the best bang for the buck? I think what you've been hearing all the way through today is you go to where you're weakest. That's where you're going to get the best bang for your buck. Whatever you're having the most trouble with, you should be doing that. So I think of this as discomfort. If you are uncomfortable right now, that's a good sign. It means you're working in the things you don't know. If you're just tra la la along, saying, I'm just reviewing the things I know, you're probably pretty comfortable, but you're also delusional, right? That's that best bang for your buck. Right now, today on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, you should be wildly uncomfortable. You should be in the midst of your briar where it is just miserable and awful for you. You can get comfortable on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday because I want you going to the exam with confidence. But right now, be uncomfortable. That's where you'll get the most impact. At least that's my view. You guys, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, I, just, I completely yes. agree. You're picking up those points right now. And then come Saturday, Sunday, get a massage, take some time, do something yep. kind for yourself. But yes, be uncomfortable right now. Yep. Yeah. And it's good to be comfortable being uncomfortable because it will be uncomfortable in the bar exam. I did not like it one bit. In fact, I used to say, you know how they're always like, bar exams like run a marathon. Okay. At the end of it, first of all, a marathon takes me less than three hours. And at the end of it, someone puts a medal around my neck and treats me like a queen. And I feel like I accomplished something. Uh, the bar, I can say the bar exam is much worse. <laughs> I will be done with the marathon, but this time you all are headed to lunch. So it's uncomfortable, right? The bar is uncomfortable. So here's your chance to get used to being uncomfortable. And you're going to get uncomfortable on the bar when you don't know a question, but it's not going to phase you. Yeah. You're going to just... You're going to be like, I know that I'm uncomfortable now and I'm going to keep it moving and be successful here. Yeah. So here's my thought about how the next six days go from a time standpoint. I think for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you should be doing full on study, whatever your study plan has been. For some of you, that's eight or nine hours a day. For some of you, it's three hours a day, but whenever it's been, you should continue that process through Friday. On Saturday, I would scale back just a bit. So if you've been doing nine hours a day, a three-hour morning, three-hour afternoon, three-hour evening after dinner, on Saturday, I'd cut out the post-dinner study. I'd bring it from nine down to six. On Sunday, I'd bring it from six down to three. On Monday, I would do no studying other than what you've heard earlier, which is to do your skimming or your photo reading and a few questions just to keep your brain sharp. And then get up early on Tuesday morning, do a few questions at your hotel or home before you head off to the test center, and then go in for the, the test itself. And then on Tuesday night, doing a brain dump and photo reading or skimming your outlines for the next day for the MBE and then finishing up. I think it's also important during the exam to take scheduled breaks. Now, it is hard to do that on day one of the exam because with essays and performance tests, you need all of that time. But certainly on Wednesday, where I think fatigue starts to set in, I would schedule at the question 50 mark to take a break in both the morning and afternoon session. If you're using selective intuition, you're going to finish 100 questions in two and a half hours or less. So you've got the time. So what I would do is if the test actually begins at, let's say, 9 a.m., it won't. But if it did, I would just say, 1030, I want to be at question 50. And I know that when I get to question 50 at 1030, I'm going to take a five minute break, put my head down, do some breathing, relax, just clear my head. 
in some of the smaller jurisdictions, you can go to the bathroom. But if you're in a if you're in Florida at the Tampa Convention Center or you're in Anaheim in California, that isn't going to happen. There's just it's just too long, too big a room. But in any event, take that break. Then you're working on 50 question increments. And I think that is helpful. But let's talk a little bit about endurance. You guys have been through it. What are your tips for endurance in getting through the exam? Brianna, you want to jump in there? For me, it was the practice leading up to the exam to be able to get through the exam. I practiced as if I was taking the exam. So I would, I did my three hour block in the morning and three hour block in the afternoon. And I had started that about a month in advance just to, 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 to get my bearings and build up that endurance to being able to sit for three hours. I love the idea of having that scheduled break. I actually, my break that I took in the, that middle was just a quick stand, stretch, stretch my legs, stay focused, not paying attention to anybody else around you. I guarantee something will happen. You may pass out. Somebody may throw up. Somebody may run to the restroom and just run out. You have to be laser focused. I love the idea of having that scheduled break. Only pay attention to you, yourself, and I. Don't let anybody else bug you. Don't, if it bothers you, don't talk to anybody else. Stay in your own little world. Stay in your own little zone. Get up and beeline when you're done. Go straight back to your hotel. Go straight to your car. Don't listen to the chatter going on around you. You want to be laser focused during this time. So having that schedule break, practicing as if you're taking the exam in those three-hour blocks, and then try not to pay attention to anybody else. Yeah. Amanda, what would you suggest for people for this weekend coming? Yeah, I think all those things and I, you know, about the timing, the breaks and this weekend coming. Yeah, do some stuff for you and like kind of wind down, right? Don't run yourself into the ground because, again, you need that endurance to get through the exam. Like you said, Jackson, you can rest on this is the rest of the, these last few days of the week, but then you can rest and get to where you need to go, right? Focus on your travel, packing the things, printing all the things you need. You, that you have your ID, if you have a vaccination card, if they're still requiring it, all those things that are, they require organization and time and energy as well. Yeah, absolutely. On that topic, I will say what I always say, and it's controversial, so I'll just preface it with that. I think you should dress up for the bar exam. I think you should dress like you're going to court. I know there are a lot of people that are like, oh man, I want to be comfortable. I get that. However, this is your life. This is the way your life is going to be. And I think when you come to the bar exam dressed like you're going to work, you are sending a message to yourself, most importantly, that this is serious and you're here to be a lawyer. I also think it's got an incredible impact on the proctors and the people around you. I think it's a mind game a little bit, but it'll keep the proctors off your back. And that part is nice. And frankly, if you're a photo reader or you're doing some of the things we're doing, people are going to think you're crazy anyway. So you might as well just be crazy and, and take that approach. But, but I think there's some value to just having that hero's pose, right? The posture that says, I'm here to do work and to do business. And look, when it's all done on Wednesday night, you walk out and you're done. But for those two days, I think it's worth doing. So that is my recommendation. I love to, I love the pictures that people send me from outside the test room before they go in, when they're in their hero pose. We'd love those. If you get them, send them, and we'll post them on the uh, community group because we think it's great to see that. And, uh, and just picture success. Picture what it's going to look like when you pass the exam and that you've agreed to do an interview with me. Not everyone does, obviously, but I love it when people do. And it, it, it's, a great, it's a great mental picture to have going in. This is what it's going to be like when I pass and when I'm able to share that story. June, you want to? Give some thought there. No, I agree with everybody. We talk a lot about being in your world. You're not going to this bar exam. Friend. You've probably never seen these people. It is a soul journey. Do not 
let someone into the headspace you have created over these past months. It works so hard to get into a really good headspace. So stick by yourself, to yourself. And this weekend, be boring. Don't no party <laughs> tricks. Don't do anything <laughs> crazy. Don't try a new food for the first time. Just be boring. Okay, just chill, take some downtime, do something for yourself, like everybody said. Nothing crazy. You can do the crazy stuff after the bars. We have seen some crazy stories, heard some a lot. Keep smooth and steady this way. And you will be fine. Again, do not talk yourself out of this. You've gotten so far. Do not roll up to the bar exam center, conference center, wherever it may be, and see a lot of people and go to a place of anxiety. We're never all going to get in and yes, you will. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Center yourself. You are fine. And see yourself having already passed. Okay? Before you walk in, to wherever you're going to be. Just take a moment. Your car, wherever. Shut your eyes. And see yourself having already passed. And then go in and do the thing. And you'll be all right. There you go. Wisdom. I want to thank our panel. Brianna and Amanda and June. And Tracy, of course, is not here today. But appreciate your wisdom is so valuable. And I know people enjoy these group calls that enjoy may not be the right word. They get incredible value out of them. I think what we've tried to do in preparing you for this upcoming exam is to give you our best input. We've told you what works. I think June's point about staying in your own headspace is really important. There are going to be people that come up with all these bizarre things at the bar exam, and you just have to ignore them. This course works. We've got 30 years of of proof of that. You're looking at people who have used this course and been successful. People that have used this course and been successful. Don't deviate from what we've told you to do. Don't go in on Tuesday and forget about FLA and start I. Don't suddenly forget how to do an MBE question with selective intuition on Wednesday. Just follow what we've told you to do. And then let the examiners do their job. They're going to grade you when they're done. Your job is to do the very best you can do. I want to thank all of you February bar takers. You've been wonderful. This has been a great group of people to work with. I've had a blast and I've certainly enjoyed working with our new crew assembled this year. And I'm very excited about that and thank all of you for your efforts. You guys are terrific. And I look forward to hearing everybody's stories after the exam, doing the postmortems and talking about that. We'll be back in a couple of weeks, as June told you, and we'll uh, recap what happened across the country in the bar exams in February. And then we'll turn our sights immediately to the July exam. Crazy as that sounds, but that's the way it rolls. Hope everybody has safe travels. Stay healthy. Have a great couple of days of testing. Just do your best work. Take your hero pose, right? And uh, be ready to go. And uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you, Brianna. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, June. It's been great having you guys here. And uh, to all of you, have a great test. Do your very best work. And we will see you on the other side. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.